show. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, um, Okay, I will talk about against this uh, some applications of uh, quasi determinants and uh, mostly today about non commutative uh, Plucker and uh, flag coordinates. Okay, uh, so let first me uh, recall what are uh, commutative Plucker coordinates. I will do it in the most primitive way. Uh, so suppose you have a, a k by n matrix, uh, so A. Then you take a submatrix uh, just defined by k columns of A. So you, you, you choose any, any k columns. This is, again, k by k submatrix and the Plucker coordinates are just uh, with this with the, the, those indices i1 and so on ik are just determinants of this matrix okay and so this is just a well known construction and uh, it has actually <clears throat> like uh, three important uh, properties and so the first is uh, it's invariant under, well, actually, relatively invariant under multiplication by k by k matrices from the left. So this then, if you multiply, then the, your Plucker coordinates will be multiplied by the determinant of x. Then, of course, those Plucker coordinates are skew symmetric in indices. You exchange two of them, then minus. And it's very and uh, it's, it's very important relations, which in general can be written by this, uh, like this. So you have first a set of k minus one indices, and then you have the set with a k plus one indices. So, so you, you just take one index from the second set and move it to the first set, take then this Plucker coordinates and multiply by the second Plucker coordinates so that is remaining. And the alternating sum of those guys is equal to zero. And, um, and now this is just, and then for, say for k uh, equals two and n equals four, you have just a celebrated identity, uh, which I will, actually this is p12, p34, minus p13, p24, plus p14, p23 equals zero. And so I remember that, uh, Israel Gelfand uh, always asked to, uh, uh, he always asked uh, his students if they know this identity, because it's actually very important. In particular, it's important for um, Gelfand are more the theory of uh, hypergeometric functions. Now I'm I'm writing this uh, in this form. So p13, p24 to the right. This is more fashionable way to write it, which and it came from um, people doing cluster algebra. And so okay, now let's just, let's define quasi Plucker coordinates. Oh, there is a misprint in the in the name of Plucker, but okay. And so again, suppose again A is also K by N matrix over non-commutative ring, and uh, you take again the set of distinct elements K minus one distinct elements, and you consider the following ratio. So you try. Uh, so, so you have. Uh, suppose you have two indices, two extra indices i and j, 
And then you consider this matrix uh, with the columns with indices i and then i1, so on ik, k minus 1. And the say, and then another matrix when you start with J. So these two matri um, these two matrices they are differ only by their left uh, column. Right now, since you want to have a quasi determinant, you have to start with an element, and so you start in this ice column. One element, and you must do the same for your second metric. So you start again with the, in the first column from the elements. So you box this element on the same level. Okay, now suppose that this ratio is defined, so both the determinants are defined, and uh, one of them is can be inverted, and then uh, the funny thing is that this ratio does not depend on S. Just let me see. Uh, does not depend. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the ratio does not depend on S and does not depend on the ordering of this set, set I. So from, you, you can order you can order I1 and I K minus one in any order. And what you have in the commutative case, you have just the ratio of two determinants again of of matrices which differ only by their one column. All right. Oh, just a second. Okay, now we'll discuss properties. Well, okay, so the first is just uh, clearly so then that, that so if J is uh, belongs to this uh, capital I, then the quasi determinant is zero. That's so falls from properties of quasi determinant. Uh, what is more interesting that if you exchange I and J, then you, you, you got the inverse quasi determinant. Uh, in the inverse quasi Pucher coordinates. And now, uh, so you, be, you believe maybe that this is a reasonable definition because it is invariant under multiplication from the left by invertible matrices. And it is not surprising if you look in the commutative version, because then you have uh, this is a fraction, so you will have determinant of x divided by determinant of x, but uh, so in, in a general non-commutative way, you can prove that an, um, um, after multiplication by x, uh, the quasi-determinant, uh, the quasi-plucker coordinates change. Now, there is a crazy skew symmetry property, but later I will convince, I'll try to convince you that it makes sense. And it goes like this. Um, so if, uh, if you have uh, the set N with K plus one elements and three elements in S, in N, then you can just consider this multiplication as it is written here, and you've got negative one. So we will see example in a minute. But uh, let me again emphasize that you are multiplying in a categorical sense. So you can multiply QIJ by QJL, but uh, so it behaves, so they behave like morphisms in categories. 
And now then, um, oh, now then, okay, just a second. Okay, now so let's discuss examples. Now uh, here, uh, what is in here is just this Bluecker relation. Okay, I will give an example in a few seconds. But so let's discuss what we have. Um, try to understand the basic example. For example, when n n is one two three, you have this product that q one two three times q two three one times q three one two equals negative one. Let's check it in the commutative case. Uh, so the first is uh, the, the so the, the first coordinate is equal to p two three of p one three. Uh, second, uh, it is P31 over P21, and next is P12, P32. And then you notice that any commutative Blucher coordinates, uh, uh, it actually, uh, in this expression, it has, say, P12 and P21. The ratio will give you negative 1, the same for P31 and P13, and P23, P32. You multiply and you get a negative one. All right, now let's try to understand. Um, okay, now let's try to understand, uh, to have an example for the Plucker identity here. Okay, it was written in the following way. So this example, when uh, you have a two by four matrix, and uh, then uh, here I, you pick up pi uh, equals one, and then so that uh, the Blucher identity now looks like this, q one, two, three times q two, one, four plus q143 times q412 equals 1. So what you do basically in, in the left turn, you just exchange these two uh, indices, 2 and 4. So 2 and 4, you have 4, 2, and the sum is equal to 1. And then I will talk about this later. Basically, it says that the sum of two non-commutative cross ratios equals one. So let's look at this in the uh, commutative case. But so, so let's interpret this identity in the uh, commutative case. And so it will be just an extra check. So the first uh, term is like P23 or P13 times P14 or P24. The second is P43, P13 times P1, P12 or P42, and it equals 1. So if you look at the this term, the second term, I can just, instead of P43, I, I can take P34, and simultaneously, instead of P42, I will take P24. Okay. So then, um, just, just nothing changed. But then, the uh, the denominator in both expressions will be the same, P13, P24. So if I will multiply by this, I will have exactly the identity that I showed, that I showed this. Uh, 
Okay, I, I, I'm sorry, just let me see. I, I can find it, what it is. Should be here. Okay, oh, here it is. P12, P34, plus P14, P23, plus P13, P24. So I got basically this identity. And so this maybe convince you that this, um, so that uh, this identity for uh, quasi pucker coordinates uh, actually is correct. Okay, and so this is so this is just, but uh, here we have left pucker coordinates, and they are defined by matrix K by N when K is less than N. What about matrices N by K? So when so, so you have more rows than columns, then you consider basically the, the dual construction. So in so in uh, here you have just indices again y1, yk minus one, but they are indices for rows, not for columns. Then you have one more row of index i. And for the second matrix, you have uh, just uh, uh, one. Uh, so the upper row depends on, on the index J. Other rows are the same. And, first. Mm -hmm. and then you have to start. With it. So you have to box, actually, an element here and the element here. And you must box them in the same row, in the same column, same column. And uh, this, what you call, it's called right Blucher coordinates. Again, this is in commutative case, so this is the ratio of two determinants. The properties are dual to the left. And so I will not discuss it, but the only thing is that, um, but, um, Interesting thing, it is their connection, so why they are dual to each other. And so if you have k by n matrix and n times n minus k matrix, such that their product equals zero, then you know with the indices that are written here, maybe easier to read than to say it loud, you have this. Uh, I did this, uh, this identity. Okay. Uh, so basically, you have a duality between left, uh, between left uh, uh, non commutative vector space and the defined by. Um, uh, defined by rows of A and the right non commutative vector space defined by columns by B. And so if you have this condition A, A, B equals zero, then you have this relation between left and right coordinates. You will see that in some problems you need both. You need left uh, coordinates and right coordinates. Now let's talk about applications. Okay, so the first application is the following, is decomposition along rows and columns. 
And so you know that if you have just in the commutative case, you have a matrix and you compute, uh, you want to compute determinant, then you, you can take pick up a row or a column, and then you just travel along this row and so cross out uh, one column and, uh, in this row, take the determinant, multiply by the value of this element and so on. And uh, this alternating sum will give you your determinant. Mm -hmm. The same if you go on this column, but uh, for quasi determinants, you need not just multiply elements from your row, not by determinants, but by Blucher coordinates. So, for example, if you travel the long row of index k, then you have AKL, oh, it's, it's a boxed element, then you have the sum, kj, and then you have this quasi-Blucher coordinates of the matrix A when you're with the when you remove uh, row of index k. So you have n minus one times n matrix. So you can consider it's quasi pluker coordinates so there here, and you have this identity. For the row, uh, this is for the column. Well, this is for the row, excuse me. The next is for the column. Suppose you want to move from the column. But then you have to consider metrics such that this column index L is removed. So you have N times N minus one metrics. For this matrix, you can take right quasi pucker coordinates and then multiply this again categorically, pretend that the Reasons of the object. So you multiply ki by ail, rho ki by ai. And uh, this is just this form. Okay. Well, we teach our students how to do this in the commutative case. Well, non commutative case is a little bit harder. But again, the advantage is that you know uh, that you, you can think about those uh, just expressions as morphisms in a category. So they are composite. All right. Now, another thing is just relations between quasi determinants of metrics. So we talked about this, that uh, the matrix has actually many quasi-determinants. Um, in the generic case, it's n squared, if this is n by n matrix. And uh, so, but they are connected. So if you take this quasi-determinant in one quasi-determinant, in the row of index i and then another in the row of index i, then they are related just by multiplication of again by this quasi Blucher coordinates. Again, this left quasi Blucher coordinates because you remove this row of index i again, have n minus 1 by n minus. Okay, um, now you, you may compare quasi-determinants, uh, which defined by elements in the same column, or column of index J. So suppose you have the two, one, one, one is of index L, L J, another one of index ij, uh, then so you remove this j column, so you have matrix n by n minus 1, 
the size of n, n by n minus one, so you have to take the uh, uh, right quasi Plucker coordinates, and then you have this identity. So we gain this quasi Plucker coordinates are here. Now, <clears throat> there is a classical problem, and again, that we teach our students. And this is about LDU factorization of index. And so the problem is the following. So suppose you have a matrix, again, generic matrix. And you want to present this as a product of low triangular matrix with ones of the diagonal the diagonal matrix and the upper diagonal and upper triangular matrix again with ones. And so you want to have formulas for those inputs. Now the easiest way is just to, to describe formulas for uh, the, the, the diagonal matrix. So what you do is so the following. So that's this is your matrix A. You can see the submatrices. So this is so just K by K submatrix matrices just going from the left upper angle, so like this. And then you so so, and then you take this the quasi determinant of this index KK. So, for example, Y1 will be exactly A11, and Y2 will be quasi determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix A11, A12, A21, A22, and it starts with A22. And uh, I, again, in the commutative case, if you multiply all those elements on this diagonal, you will have the determinant clearly. And uh, actually, you can do this in the non commutative case as well, but then you have to explain what you got. So, okay, so this is it. Now, let's talk about elements in there. Uh, low triangular matrix and in the upper triangle matrix. Okay, so I I will describe find two types of matrices. The first matrix B sub K is actually generated by the first K columns of matrix A. And matrix C is generated, is defined by first K columns of matrix A. So B of K is M times K matrix, and C is K by N matrix. So, and clearly, then if you want to take Plucker coordinates, then for B you take right Plucker coordinates, and for C you take left Plucker coordinates. And uh, here we are just the formulas. So this is for the low triangular matrix X. Well, beta alpha is equal to R. This index is beta alpha. And upper indexes are a one, two, and so on, alpha minus one. This just and to apply this to the corresponding submatrix of A B of alpha. And if you want to do this for the right, for the upper block triangular, for the upper triangular matrix. Then you have also you have to take this left Plucker coordinates for going into the indices alpha and beta. Okay, now then, then you have alpha minus one in the, in the indices up, just 
So here we have indices from one to alpha minus one and applied again to this matrix. So everything is defined, well, at least formally, and you have your factorization of your matrix. Well, for example, if uh, here is an example of what you get when you um, uh, so here is an example just uh, and, uh, what you get when on, on for two by two matrix. So this is just you can see this. So well, now here you have just uh, right Blucher coordinates for just two by one, one matrix. And here you have left coordinates again for one times two matrix. Okay. Now this uh, th theorem has actually interesting generalizations because you may consider sort of uh, uh, factorizations of the Brua cells even so called so double Brua cells, it's actually some the factorizations of double Brua cells. Uh, it's somehow it's related to cluster algebras and so on. Now, and you, you can look at those formulas in this paper that we wrote with uh, Arkadzi well, some time ago. Actually, it was our first joint paper. Okay. <clears throat> so this is about Blucher coordinates. Now what about fl flag coordinates? Well, what is flag? Flag is, so suppose you have just this matrix A, K by N, and then you consider the subspace of the, of the left vector space R, R to the N, R is your ring, generated by the first P rows of E. So you have just a flag, so you have F1, F2, and so on, F sub K. And then you can define this flag coordinates. So you take actually a menu. So this, this is like this. So this is just a quasi-determinant. And um, first of all, if you, so this definition shows that this cord, this expression does not depend on the order of indices with the J2 and so on, JK. And you now actually multiply this your matrix by, from the left by low triangular uh, unipotent matrix. So it means with bounds of the diagonal and nothing will change. Now, actually, this approach actually leads to some interesting relations, and I will do this only for two by four matrices. And let me write this. this. So this is actually, so actually you have for two by three matrix, you have these triangular relations. So you see this, uh, they are products of quasi-determinants and which starts in the uh, second row. So just this equality. And um, uh, I will just point out that if you look the, the matrix that is in the middle, so that's the quasi-term minus one, this is the same matrix. 
of the same matrix, but uh, quasi determinants are different. Okay, and then you also have relations for to the two by four case. So this is just this alternating product, first alternating product plus, plus second alternating product equal just to this quasi determinant. And again, if you look in the matrices that are in the middle, they are the same. And um, Uh, but uh, quite again, quasi determinants are different. Okay, and uh, why it's called Ptolemy? And, and, and this is actually the basis for our definition with Arcadia of uh, non commutative Ptolemy relations. And uh, but uh, and uh, we got so we proved so called Laurent phenomenon for uh, non-commutative surfaces just uh, triangulated uh, uh, non-commutative surfaces um, well, using just this non-commutative version of the uh, classical Ptolemy relations, but we have to add these triangular relations, which again in the commutative case uh, so this is this is just a tautology. So this is equal to this. Okay, why it's called Ptolemy? Because it's remind just the high school geometry theorem that when you have just a circle and a quadrilateral inscribed in the circle, then the product. Um, so then uh, the product of diagonals is equal to the sum of products on the opposite sides. So on, but this is actually a favorite, uh, the favorite identity for people doing uh, cluster algebra. One of the favorite. Okay, now let me consider first application of this uh, non commutative of this quasi pure coordinates and let me talk about non commutative cross ratios okay so cross ratios is a classical invariance um, pro projective invariance and uh, you can describe this as, as an invariance when you have just or straight line on you on a plane intersecting in one point. Okay, then you can define cross ratio the invariant, and this is actually how Israel Gelfand taught his students. What is a just a cross ratio, and of course I, I mean classical case. So if you want to de define just a system of coordinates on the plane, then you need three lines. So you need line intersecting in one point. So you need a line which will correspond to your x axis. You have a line which corresponds to your y axis. Well, they are not necessarily perpendicular to any lines. But then you have to know how to go from axis to y's. So you have the third line, and uh, it defines your equation y equals x. Okay, so you got your coordinate system, and then you have this coordinate the, the, um, this the line number four and it will have uh, equations y equals kx and this k is just cross ratio and uh, it is actually a projective invariant 
Okay, all right. So now there are formulas for Krasnik concentrations. We will talk about this. So I try to do the same in the commutative case, which uh, can be actually formulated like this. So you have just the commutative division ring. Well, sorry, non commutative well, division ring R. Okay, and you have four vectors. Then you have to define the cross ratio based on these four vectors. In, in, in the standard case, you can consider the straight lines defined by those vectors. So you, you can define cross ratio. This is just a translation of the geometric picture that I described at the following. So this, uh, this vector T is a linear combination of X and Y, right linear combination for the commutative case, and Z is uh, a linear combination, so, but which is just sort of almost proportional, but Y is additionally multiplied by variable Kappa. Then you can solve this. And you got the expression of Kappa as a product of two Lucker coordinates. So, so they are indexed by x, y, z, and z in this case. And so we have this product of Lucker coordinates. And remember, they were just, they appeared in the formula for two by four, four. Let's look at identity associated with the two by four matrices. Uh, again, well, let me again emphasize that uh, uh, categorically, this is a path, path from Z to Z. Okay, now why uh, this is just, what kind of invariant it is? Okay, now if you consider invertible two by two matrices over R, they are acting on vectors R2 by multiplication from the left as it is written here. You can define actually the action of the invertible elements of R and this act by multiplication from the right. So X is multiplied by well, say by lambda inverse. So if you consider just then the product of two uh, of uh, four co copies of R, R, or of in invertible elements of R. This is T4 and T because this is actually non commutative torus. So you can define the action of this product on R2 cross R2 cross R2 cross R2. And the action is that the following you multiply by GL2 from the left and by torus, for the amount of torus from the right. Actually, I, I, I have to mention that the same is going on when you're trying to define uh, some sort of hypergeometric functions, but I don't need here. But what I need here is the statement that the cross ratios are a relative invariance of this section. So what does it mean? And it means the following theorem. So suppose you have 
you are given your cross ratio and it defined uh, well with the you know, with these two exceptions it's about zero and one. Then you have four tuples x so four vectors x y z t and uh, vectors x prime y prime z prime t prime and they belong to the same orbit of GL2 and T4 if and only if there exists just an invertible element mu such that uh, the cross ratio of the first four is equal to the cross ratio of the second four conjugated by mu. So in the commutative case, you have just identity. So this is just invariant. Now in the non-commutative case, and it's very common that many invariant, many commutative invariants became relative invariants. So they are invariant under multiplication from by say mu and mu inverse. So by conjugation, you cannot avoid this. This is the price that you pay for non commutativity. Now, non commutative um, cross ratios, they have some many properties of commutative cross ratios. Uh, one of them is so uh, the following uh, that this is just you have this product. So if you have five vectors and you define this corresponding cross ratios, then you have this identity. And uh, <clears throat> You have the other identity, and this is when you exchange, when you put uh, you have your t and you put your t from from the end to the beginning. So this is just how they are related. They are related just by this identity, which is actually, uh, in fact, this is just this Blucher identity for two by four matrices that we discussed. Well, now, in general, there are actually, you have 24 cross ratios defined for vectors. So you have four, factor, four factorial permutations. And uh, in, in the commutative case, it's known how they are related. So let me just, but again, in the let me describe how they are related in the non commutative case. Well, for example, this is just what happens if you just exchange y and x. Okay, in the commutative case, you have the same stuff in the, uh, oh, sorry, but you exchange simultaneously x, y, and d. And in the commutative case, you have the same cross ratio. In the non-commutative case, you have this again, this cross ratio up to a conjugation. Because for example, here you have QTZX to the, on the left and QZTX on the right, and uh, they are inverse to each other. Well, there is another way to of the conjugation, and we'll get this. But again, this you have identity up to a conjugation. So here is actually another example. Well, again, here you exchange, uh, um, you, you put z t in, in front of x y, and you have again this identity up to a conjugation. Well, here you have. Uh, of, uh, uh, so here you have actually put 
T and Z in front of XY, but you exchange T and Z. Here again, you have identity of the same order. And now well, this one is a little bit different. But again, you may have identities for all, for all 24 cases. Okay, and uh, since I started to talk about geometry, let me go back to uh, elementary geometry. Before, uh, before I have to mention that there is a, in the commutative case, uh, there is a relation between cross ratios and so-called Schwartz derivative. That's another invariant. I will not mention it here, but Schwarz invariant is sort of an in infinitesimal form of the cross ratio. And such thing uh, is also valid in the non commutative case. And uh, this is just a reference to our joint paper where they uh, discussed. Okay. And uh, also from the same paper, let me do this very elementary theorem. And uh, this is so-called uh, theorem of many laws. And so it means so the following. So suppose you have a triangle, ABC, and you take point uh, R on this line AB, point P on the line BC, and point Q on the line a AC. Okay, and the question is when you have a straight line coming through these three points. And, and one answer is actually given again by uh, actually using quasi determinants. Uh, so you have like, like six points in a two-dimensional plane, plane R2. Well, you consider this as a right vector space, doesn't matter. So you have actually two by six matrix with columns uh, that, so the first columns are coordinates of A, which are two, A1, A2, the next, coordinates of B, B1, B2, and so on. So you have just six columns. Then you can define this quasi Blucher coordinates. So this is the corresponding. And you can multiply. And so if, if you see that you, again, you multiply this in a categorical sense. So just pretending that they are morphous with the category, so they are composable. And so the theorem says that the points PQR belong to a straight line if and only if uh, this product is equal to one. Now, why uh, I mentioned this theorem in a talk about <laughs> uh, on conference on integrable system, and so this is because um, also the uh, applications of elementary geometry to integrable system were discussed by Schiff and Pelchenko in several papers. There are applications of other elementary theorems like Cheva theorem. And so, so. All right, so then uh, I will probably stop right now and, uh, and okay. answer questions. Yeah. Thank you very much for the very interesting talks.